half tonight. Vargas has gained 11 pounds since the weigh-in. Rules it about with her unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. The Floyd Mayweather Jr. Goyo Vargas fight is scheduled for 12 rounds using the unified rules of the Association of Boxing Commissions. There is no standing aid count, no three knockdown rule. Only the referee can stop the fight, and you cannot be saved by the bell in any round, including the 12th and final round. Jim. All right, Harold. And now we're going to watch uh, Goya Vargas come into the ring. Veteran fighter, and if you remember seeing him here previously on HBO, it was five and a half years ago when he fought Kevin Kelly for a 126-pound world championship. At that time, Vargas held the 126-pound title, surrendered it to Kelly in a seesaw war here on HBO, and since that time has moved up, fighting now at 130 pounds, although most of his recent fights, Larry Merchant, have taken place at a weight level of 135 or 136 pounds. Uh, he looks right right now, Jim, like he weighs about 170 with all of that Aztec regalia on him. I don't think even Floyd Mayweather can surpass this. Goyo had a chance to fight Mayweather six months ago, backed out of the fight with three days to go before the promotion was held, and infuriated a lot of people by doing so. He says he was sick and couldn't have entered the ring and given an effective performance at that time. And he did so because when he fought Kelly six years ago, he says he came in after an automobile accident and he injured a knee, but he felt he had to fight him and it damaged him during the fight. And a closer look now at Goyo Vargas. He lost his title in his first defense to Kevin Kelly. Since that time, six years, just one disputed loss in all of that time, getting him back to where he is. But, should he lose tonight, he indicates this could be his last hurrah because he's been at boxing, amateur and pro, for more than 20 years. And he says he's kept his money, bought uh, rental properties in his hometown of Toluca, Mexico, and uh, he's going to go back and enjoy the fruits of his labor. But not before this effort to embarrass the widely ballyhooed Mayweather. And here comes Floyd Jr. That's his father. Just over his right shoulder. Screen left as they enter the ring. Business like entrance in leather. Interesting sidelight. When Floyd Sr. went to the boxing commission yesterday, they asked him what color trunks he was wearing, his son was wearing, and in an embarrassed, almost hurt way, he said, I'm sorry, I don't know. That's how big the rift is between them outside of the ring and the gym. His new manager, James Prince, wants to make an imprint in boxing. Hi, Manuel. I'm going to start off by grabbing some of the superstars in boxing. And Mayweather, I think, is just beginning. I think you're going to see other of the uh, top champions also be uh, invited up, so to say, by James Prince. Well, there's a rumor that he's about to sign a management deal with Mike Tyson as Tyson's existing deal with Kelly Finkel comes to a close. And uh, that'll be interesting to see. Mayweather has become good buddies with Tyson and trained in the, gym, the same gym where Tyson trains now in Phoenix, Arizona. Arizona. Here's a closer look, Larry. This is the longest layoff of his professional career. It should not bother him, although he did put on more weight than he usually does. Part of his deal with his new manager is he has started a new label called Filthy Rich. <laughs> <laughs> and he has a new goal, which is to fight anyone from 130 to 140 pounds. 
starting with Prince Nassim Hamed, but he may have to wait a while. While you're watching the fight tonight, log on to hbo.com slash boxing. There you'll be able to score each round and spend some time chatting with lightweight champion Paul Spadafora. Incidentally, if you were with us last Saturday night and you're wondering what was the outcome of the website question asking if fans wanted to see Prince Nassim Hamed win or lose, the answer is that 57% of voters on the website wanted to see Naz lose. So the other 43% got their way, and I'm betting that the next time around the results would be flip-flopped if we were to do it again. Let's go up to Michael Buffer now for the official introductions on this one. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, from the MGM Grand of Las Vegas, Nevada, Bob Arum's top rank incorporated along with your undisputed, undefeated king of beers, Budweiser, proud to be your bud, present 12 rounds of boxing for the WBC Super Featherweight Championship of the World. Thank you by the Nevada State Athletic Commission Chairman Dr. Elias Ghanem, Commissioners Dr. Luther Mack, Amy Ayub, Glenn Carano, Lorenzo Fertitta, Executive Director Mark Ratner, WBC Supervisor at Ringside Robert Lee. Our four physicians in attendance are Dr. Flip Homansky, Dr. Margaret Goodman, Dr. Gino Signorino, and Dr. William Berlino. The timekeepers at the bell are James Cavan and Mike Lachella, and the three judges who will be scoring this bout on the 10-point must system are Chuck Jampa, John Keane, and Daniel Vandevilla. And when the bell rings, working for the 160th time in a world title bout, your referee, Richard Seal. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for the thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world, on the heart and soul of boxing, HBO. Uh, let's get ready to rumble! Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing gold and black and weighing in at 130 pounds. His professional record stands at 47 contests with 40 victories and 6 losses with 1 draw. And 28 of those victories have come by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen from Ciudad de Mexico, here is the number one ranked challenger in the world, the former featherweight world champion, Goyo Varga! And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, wearing black, trimmed with red, and also weighing in at 130 pounds. He brings a perfect professional record to the ring, consisting of 22 bouts, 22 victories, including 17 knockouts. And he is mentioned by many as being among the best pound for pound in the world today. Ladies and gentlemen from Grand Rapids, Michigan, presenting the reigning and defending undefeated WBC Super Featherweight and Champion of the World, Pretty Boy Floyd Mayweather. Let's go. Okay, I spoke to both fighters in the dressing room. I'm cautioning you again. Obey my commands at all times. Shake hands and good luck. Mm -hmm. Well, after watching uh, Diego Chico Corrales operate in the first fight, and with the prospect of a fight with Mayweather looming later in the year, adds a little bit of uh, extra interest in Mayweather's performance tonight. Class Carlos Arena of Puerto Rico. He steps out of the corner here and immediately shows Vargas his remarkable hand speed, firing left hands and landing two or three of them before that one's finally blocked. Now Floyd jabs. He started off leading with the left hook and again leans a left hook shot. The, the difference here is just speed. Even though Goyo is blocking Mayweather's punches, he cannot retaliate and be effective himself because he's just too slow. But he's able to defend himself to a certain degree, but he can't do anything effective on the offensive maybe because of the speed factor. 
Mayweather won the world title from Genaro Hernandez. There were some in the sport who thought he was being rushed, that he was in too quickly against Hernandez. Within a couple of rounds, he dispelled that notion as he thoroughly outclassed Hernandez en route to taking the championship. Hasn't really been threatened at any time in his professional career. And the last time I saw him have a real rough fight in the set person was Alvin Sanchez. In the amateurs? In the amateurs, that's true. It was a true good fight that I saw him fight. Augie Sanchez, who's a local Las Vegas kid, incidentally. Well, the biggest difference is right here, just his speed element is just too much for these professional fighters. In the amateurs, it was a big factor, but still, he had fighters who were much faster. But uh, right now, at this stage right here, the speed is just going to be the factor in this fight. It's simply one way. Vargas manages to stick a right hand to the body. Vargas continues to block Mayweather's left hook with his right hand. Vargas' defense is, is very intelligent. He knows that he cannot cope with the speed of Mayweather, so as soon as he sees Mayweather starting to approach with the flower punches, he just merely puts both his hands up. So what happened? Because like a lot of brilliant young stars who can do most of what they want to in the ring, Mayweather doesn't throw to the body all that much. You know, he's not a body puncher, and the fact that Vargas is not a very good upper body movement fighter himself, he doesn't move his body too much. Vargas so, is able to so land the counter left hand. He basically just kind of puts his hands up to protect himself. But it's going to be very interesting, though, at this point, I'm kind of surprised that Mayweather seemingly have not been able to figure out how to penetrate through the defense of Vargas. And that's mainly a tribute to the fact that he's not that much of an effective body puncher. That's right. And you can see the calm professionalism of Vargas in the face of all this. I mean, it, it, he's been in against quicker fighters before. That's true. And at this stage, even Mayweather was the point of Mayweather, his father, telling him, go to the body and then go upstairs with that kind of hooky. Body punch hook combination. That was the good advice you were referring to, Emmanuel? Yes, what his father's telling him. Throw the punch to the head first to make him take his elbows up and then just hit him to the bottom because he won't be able to see it. But Vargas is, is, is fighting a good fight in the fact that he's picking his punches off. And if he attacks Mayweather after blocking Mayweather's punches, I think he would be more effective than if he leaves. After Mayweather finishes his punches off, then his body's in the upright position. Whereas Vargas can come back, I think, and it would be much safer. Safer for him at that time to attack also. There's a red spot on the bridge of Vargas's nose. Good example right there. He blocked the punch and then punched after blocking the punch instead of trying to leave first. Vargas still picking off a lot of Mayweather's shots with his hands, but as Emmanuel Stewart pointed out in round one, unable to fire back while being occupied defensively. And incidentally, that's Vargas' father who speaks to him between rounds in the corner. The language barrier robs us of the chance to listen to Joe Goosen, one of the more entertaining corner-by-corner, or round-by-round uh, -round trainers in the sport. Definitely. <laughs> That's once again is a sample of speed. He cannot be that effective offensive. But Mayweather is not able to, to penetrate, which is, is interesting. And he still is not following instructions of his father, which is to punch to the head first to make him take his arms up and then the punch to the body. Vargas trying to stick the left hand to the body, now tries it again. Obviously Vargas hoping to get to the body a little bit in the early rounds and maybe rob Mayweather of some of the foot speed. Mayweather's changing his style now. He's trying to lean in closer where he, he can minimize the amount of time that Vargas can have to time his punches. He's trying to lean in and punch at a much shorter distance. Now Vargas becomes the stalker and backs Mayweather against the ropes and tries to do it again. Latin American segment of the crowd chanting Goyo, Goyo, Goyo. Trying to give Vargas a little incentive. Mayweather with the right hand lead blocked. Left hook is blocked. 
And if you notice, Mayweather, even though he moves as if he's a flashy boxer, he doesn't really box. He very seldom shoots effective jabs. He basically pauses with the jab and loads up with flares or combinations of punches. But he doesn't really move around boxing. He has the movements of a boxer, but he doesn't box. I think his most effective punch is the right hand lead. That's right. And you have to hit him. Uh, Don't fake it, throw it. So far, Vargas, uh, excuse me, Mayweather has been very good with his speed avoiding punches. He's been less successful taking the offense and using any aggression to make something happen so far. He's a very bright young man. Maybe he'll have something figured out soon. After three begins, go ahead, Emmanuel. I think it would be effective if Mayweather would start fighting Vargas a little closer. Because even though Vargas is a smaller fighter, his punches are much wider and he has such a loop room. And if he would fight him at a much closer range, I think he would catch him while he's throwing a wide punch. And I think he's trying to close the distance right now. Yes, I think he needs to settle in and fight him a lot closer. He has stepped in a half a step and now tries to begin reaching for Vargas's body. Well, I, I just don't see that Mayweather wants to, to get in close at all. I think he wants to avoid contact. That's the type of fighter he is. He uses speed as his big advantage so that he doesn't get hit. His first priority is not to get hit. You heard that the name of the game is hit and don't be hit. His priority is don't be hit and then hit. Go all in, punch your way out. Well, I can definitely say this. Yes. We're in a much more difficult fight than I think he is expected and um, has prepared for us. Right hand lead lands there. Well, he found something right there. But he still has not been able to land a very devastating punch. That was more of a punch that the guy doesn't see yet, but it, but it doesn't knock you down or knock you out. Yeah, just an arm punch. Yes. At this point, he's not been... But he may have to satisfy himself with that for a while. Well, I, the fact that this man is closing the gap on him and being more effective and being very physical when he gets inside on him means that he's going to have to find some method of doing something different. Otherwise, the fight, he will win the fight probably, but he may not have the impressive victory and performance that he's looking for. That's a good hard right hand counter by Vargas as he slipped it over the top of Mayweather's right hand. That's true. You've said about Lennox Lewis that to really be an outstanding champion, you have to be passionate and aggressive. Do you see either or both of those qualities in Mayweather? Mayweather right now is having to me the first solid fighter I've seen fight as a professional. I'm surprised to some of the performance of Vargas, but at this stage right now, I've saw tremendous speed, tremendous natural talent, but the other qualities, I don't think he's been put to the, to the test where he could actually be rated in those areas. There's a right hand lead that lands over the top. And this, this is the way I would like to see him fight more. Even though he's got, you know, better boxing skills, I think I would have him to fight him a little closer because I think his punches would get off much faster. And he would catch Vargas while he's in the process of trying to deliver a punch. Well, to a certain degree, you would say, as long as he's not really serious about his jab, why box? He could be a tremendous boxer. He's Four begins. Floyd Mayweather Jr. landed 14 out of 50 punches by CompuBox numbers in round three. Vargas 10 out of out of 33. Mayweather 17 of 74 in the jab department. As Emmanuel Stewart told you, more often than not, he paused with the jab rather than sticking it in there with authority. There's a good quick left hook by Mayweather, partially blocked by Vargas. Vargas chasing Mayweather to the corner, trying to get to the body. Mayweather hits him with the right hand inside. I think Vargas would like to make it a brawl if he could, uh, if he could get at Mayweather. He's trying to make it a brawl because his speed is just so slow. But at this stage right now, I don't think that Mayweather's hurt him at all in the entire fight. And in between rounds, he seems to be extremely relaxed, very comfortable. And I think it's test to make it being possibly a long fight for Mayweather. Also, he's throwing one punch at a time. Uh, 
so he can't get a combination. Because your hands do kiss his ass. <laughs> well, but he doesn't want to commit to it. He doesn't no. want to stand in there and commit. And the blood begins flowing from that cut near the top of Marcus's left temple. That is actually behind the temple, I believe, in the hairline. It's not a threat to his vision. Shouldn't be. No. Shouldn't be a factor in the fight. Good body punch. Rare body punch by Mayweather. Like a lot of fighters who are super fast on their feet, Floyd Mayweather often throws punches without having his feet set. That's true. He seems to be settling down there and trying to much better fight now. He's much more relaxed. You're holding. Excuse him to say hello to Emmanuel Stewart between punches there. <laughs> Did he say anything beyond hello, Manny? <laughs> Just kind of happy to see you here. When did you first uh, see him with a pair of gloves on? I thought he was about six years old. But it, it's, it's probably been boxing about three years or four years before that. <laughs> you saw Floyd land two quick right hands. And now Vargas gets him where he wants him. Looks like he's got him where Mayweather wants him. <laughs> Yeah, but he's not effective right now, but it's just good for the crowd. Well, and it gives Vargas a chance to land a few cheap body shots. Oh, yeah, this is his fight right here. And help create the mentality of a brawl. <laughs> Quick left hand by Mayweather as Vargas was lunging in. Good round, good round. shots with his right hand. Question here is whether he's willing to invest to break down Vargas or he's going to be content to go the distance with an easy win. Round five begins. Harold, how did you score the first four? <laughs> Jim Hines a no-brainer. Four to nothing. 40 to 36. Floyd Mayweather Jr. Jim, I don't care. I think this kid's terrific. He's hitting him with everything but the stool. I, I mean, if he ain't breaking him down, the referee must be hitting Goyo Vargas because Floyd's whacking him with lead rights, doing whatever he has to do, controlling the ring, hitting him with terrific left hooks, and Goyo Vargas can't touch him. It's a terrific left hook. Terrific left hooks, Jim. Terrific left hooks. Terrific left hooks. Terrific left hooks. This is a good fight for Floyd. I'm glad somebody is enjoying this. <laughs> right hand over the top. Left hand from underneath. Well, when you're young and you've, you've got the speed and the reflexes of a cheetah, you can get away with stuff. That was a Prince Nassim punch. Like throwing a, an uppercut from eight feet away. It's the biggest difference is just speed. Is there's too much speed in Mayweather's part time. But it's a good fight. Slip a room. Richard Steele properly ruling that a slip. And still the moisture is there, incidentally, in the same spot on the paint. But this time Floyd skips over it. See Marcus hammering to the body whenever he gets a chance. Hoping to take some of Floyd's legs away. Well, Mayweather is standing flat-footed. Maybe he thinks that Vargas is tiring a little bit. This is why I would like to see him fight more. 
because he, even though he's close, I think his hand speed is too much, uh, and he would catch him with a punch much better than the punches that he's. When he shoots his right hand leads, there are punches that can land and get punched, but they're not having that much problem. And uh, if he thought if he was fighting at a closer range right here, he would eventually land and catch him with a power punch. Otherwise, I think the fight's going to end up going to the Caribbean decision. There may be a small trickle of blood from one of Floyd Mayweather's nostrils. Either that or he's picked up blood on his face, but Marcus is stuck. Mayweather mixing in a left hand to the body in that four-punch flurry as he came out of the corner. I think Floyd's bleeding from the right nostril. He's, he's bleeding from the nose. He's probably in the toughest professional fight that he's had in the career. Not so tough that he isn't smiling in there from time to time about the way things are going. But well, he's got control, and actually it's good for a chance to spend more of his time. Marcus landed more power shots than Mayweather. Power shots meaning anything other than a jab. Hooks, crosses, uppercuts, and body shots all qualify in the CompuBox language as power shots. Vargas landing 13 to Mayweather's 10 in the fifth. Nevertheless, Floyd continues to control the fight with his speed and his footwork. Emmanuel Stewart, you've been quoted as saying that you train Prince Nassim with an eye down the road toward a possible huge showdown fight with Floyd Mayweather. You see Floyd switching south here, as he might do against Maz's southpaw stance, what would your Prince Nassim game plan be against Floyd? Well, I don't think he would switch with Nassim because Nassim is too dangerous of a puncher. He can take risk with this fighter because the guy's slow, and he can get away with things. And actually, Floyd sitting is enjoying himself at the fight now because it's turned out to be a good fight in terms of the square out appeal, but he knows that he still has too much speed for Vargas, so he's seemingly enjoying himself now. But would Maz just try to walk yeah. him down? Well, Nassim I made it in Himself has good hand speed, but more devastating single punching power. But maybe Floyd has more speed out of that in combination, but not as much power. It'd be a very interesting fight. And as Naz is learning to shorten up his punches more at this stage and keep his balance, it means that if they ever fight, maybe down the road in a year or two, it'll be a very exciting fight. It'll be a lot of speed and a lot of power. Marcus still trying to get to Floyd Mayweather Jr.'s body midway through the sixth round. Floyd's had a couple of good flurries here in the sixth. And a good left hook to the body there. None of his punches seem to be hurting by the face. Landing a lot of punches, but from the expression I can get on top of his face, you know, he knows that he's possibly losing all points, but he's not being physically hurt. And I believe as the fight goes on, he's going to start fighting a little bit more because his confidence is going to go up to the point where he believes he can't be hurt that much. Tell me, Jim, is, is what is the first fighter we've seen with a website on his trunks? Uh, he's the first Mexican fighter we've seen with a website on his trunks. How's that? <laughs> All right. Well, maybe he'll get knocked on his website uh, tonight, but Mayweather is going to have to commit some, some passion to try to make it happen. Vargas trying to give Mayweather a little straight right-hand lead action of his own. Manages to corner Mayweather for the moment. And wails away to the body. <laughs> when you finally go to the body, you often get results you're not expecting. Well, I, I think the punch, uh, the punch exploded. He, he never saw the punch coming, so it was effective. But going in this round here, I don't think it's going to have any. You okay? Until the next round, I don't think the body punch is going to have any lasting effects. The same way, you got to put him the same way. Easy enough for you to say, Emmanuel. You want to win? 
as he it was winding down, they were in his scuffle on the right, on the ropes, and there's the punch right there in the shoulder plexus. As I noted before, when Vargas has Mayweather on the ropes, he's got Mayweather where Mayweather wants him because he's got him at close quarters and he can hit him with punches he may not see. That's because once the Mayweather has much faster hands and better coordination than Right hand lands for Mayweather. Vargas kind of grinning at him. And Emmanuel Stewart pointed out in the last round, Mayweather not really hurting him with head punches. But when he fired that left hook to the body and got a perfect placement on it, it was enough to score the knockdown. The head punches, he, he, he's prepared for the most effective head punch that he's landed in basically the jab. Because Vargas is leaning in forward now as he picks the punches off so he can be in a better position when he executes himself. The early part of the fight, he was standing back blocking the punches, but he's trying to land in more his head and his hands will be closer to Mayweather after he finishes up. Well, in recent weeks, we've gotten some great illustrations of the importance of body punching. Prince Nassif loosening Gianni Bungu up with early body punches last week. Oscar De La Hoya knocking out Daryl Coley with a body punch. Felix Trinidad stopping David Reed's movement and ultimately breaking him down with vicious punishment to the body. The more young fighters learn to do it, the better they get. Uh, I feel we've seen more of that since Roy Jones oh, hey. knocked out Virgil Hill. Knocked out Virgil Hill with that crushing shot. Uh, a couple of years ago. Midway through round seven. Floyd Mayweather Jr. thoroughly in control. But Goyo Vargas able to show his vast experience and professionalism by eking out ways here and there to stay in the fight. Busting through the guard with his right hand lead. Those punches are very flashy, but they're not as effective as the, as the shorter punches are because Vargas can see the punches coming. And when you see a punch coming, your muscles and your nervous system prepares to handle it. It's, it looks good, but it's the punch, it's a short punch that you don't see, much as the body punch that lands the other round, which is the most effective. And of course, often the crowd will ooh and ah on punches that are completely blocked or partially blocked. And not only is blocked, but a lot of times that's what you brush your hands up on like those type punches also. Because you're landing more on your fingers instead of on the knuckles. Floyd has never complained about hand problems in his career. Marcus leaning against Floyd and trying to pound the weight of the body. Giving Mayweather the kind of chance he got in the last round when he knocked Vargas down with the body shot. But I think Gregorio looks kind of a good There you go. Left hand to the body again by Mayweather. This is what I'm saying. I'm not even though it's a gamble. This is one of the few real exchanges I've seen Mayweather in in any fight. Prince George Scratchy Cougar Claws, eleven dollars. Big Bad Barry Bullion, fifty-eight dollars. How fun? But Boya Vargas has hung in and tried to dish it out where he could against Floyd Mayweather Jr. And Mayweather has occasionally relished the chance to trade with Vargas and demonstrate his blinding hand speed. Harold Letterman still enthralled with the way Mayweather is fighting. Cruising to a big lead over Vargas, and we suspect that's true on the other two cards as well. Between rounds, a round and a half ago after Vargas was knocked down on a body shot from Mayweather, you heard Joe Gusa ask him, do you want to continue? Although Vargas has never been in any real serious trouble. There is uh, a welt along the right eye of Mayweather. I don't think I've seen him uh, with that sort of damage before. skills apparent on the double left hook moments ago, landing to the body and the head. Mayweather's boxing skills and speed right now is what's really winning the fight. And, and, and he, but he can't hurt Vargas as much as he would like. What 
would a Mayweather Corrales fight look like, Emmanuel? A uh, Mayweather Corrales fight would be a very interesting fight because Corrales is going to put tremendous pressure. And I don't know if Mayweather would be able to handle pressure coming from a tall fighter, which, which is up on top over him. And the fact that Corrales doesn't punch long punches where you can counter punch. He waits until he's right on you. And you normally have made your defense motions and he still hasn't punched. And when he does punch, it's going to be almost too close. Yeah, but one thing about uh, Corrales is he can be hit. He gets hit. He's open, he's open for some shots, and he'll get hit by Mayweather. I don't know that Mayweather can, can hurt him, but that's got to be a factor going the other way. Mayweather can hit him, but Mayweather's not that much of a devastating one-punch fighter. And that's, that's going to make a difference. I think the Wallace is going to be a very tough fight, in particular with his height. Off what we've seen in the last six months, you might suspect that Corrales is the harder fighter. Well, I don't, I don't suspect it. I think it's perfectly apparent. He stands flat-footed. He's right in there. He throws his punches correctly. Very short. That's good leverage on him. He commits to him. He wants to hurt the other guy. He doesn't want to outplay him. To some degree, is a version of Felix Trinidad. To some degree, the fact that being as tall as he is, he fights with his hands so high, and all of his punches are very accurate. Very low gap. Was that a, a Texas two-step round, or was it some other dance? Uh, I haven't heard of. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh! Okay, I wanted to do that. I did not know. Okay. This is the match, baby. Green and deep, let us slow. See the blue we stop over here. Uh, we got four rounds to go. You got to do it now. Let's give him some water. Uh -huh. Paquita, Paquita. Yeah, go ahead. It's not a scientific. It's a scientific. You just got to go. You just got to go. Okay? All right. Well, Vargas is a real professional. And although he himself admits that the highlight of his career has already happened years ago when he won a featherweight title and that he is near retirement. He's fighting with, with the fierce pride of a profession. And it's got to be frustrating. He's in a situation where the speed, he goes, it's too much for him and the skill. But he's doing all that he can to win the fight. And has never given up hope still. He's really making every effort that he can still to win this fight. And who knows what will happen later on in the fight when you have a fight of this type. And the fact that he's getting closer to Mayweather now. Has he won a round yet, Harold? No, Jim. I got an eight to nothing. 80 to 71 Floyd Mayweather. I tell you, Jim, you know, the judges look for four things, and he's doing all four. Well, look at this, Harold. Maybe Vargas can win around here. As Mayweather elects to hold his hands in front of his face and allow Vargas to pound away at the rib cage and the elbows. Vargas trying to put Mayweather to the test along the ropes. Floyd looking to pick a shot in here. Now, I expect Mayweather, expect Mayweather to explode after this himself. Uh, he's hoping to get Vargas to wear himself out. That's correct. Right here. Vargas gets in a left hook upstairs. Mayweather retaliates with a right uppercut. And there's a lead right hand and a right hand to the body by Vargas. And now here it comes. Vargas stopped throwing punches and Mayweather flurries. And now here comes Goyle. My goodness, a fight broke out.
most excitement I've ever seen in a Floyd Mayweather fight. Yes, it was. I've been drawn as a fan. <laughs> Absolutely. So he did this make Marcus' last stand, great but he's round. given us great something round. by which to judge Floyd. <laughs> the willing enthusiasm of Agoya Vargas, who comes to work and tries to make the fight go out of time and forces Floyd Mayweather to be good. <laughs> I don't know if Vargas won that round, but I'm going to give it to him on general principle. Yes, you have to. I think Floyd, leaning over here, wanted me to know that it was he who's making the fight, <laughs> and not Agoya Vargas. <laughs> You got it. You won that round. That was clear. You got ball. Okay. You got it. Okay. You got it. This is this is it. He's this. Here's Vargas. Throws a nice left hand over Mayweather's glove. This may be the last stand of a tough, smart, veteran fighter trying to get back into the fight or at least leave a few marks on Mayweather to know he's been in a fight. And something happened in, the, in Vargas' corner I should uh, bring your att attention to, which is that he told his corner that he was having some problems with his legs. He raised his legs to get a rub down. What do you think that means, Emmanuel? Well, that was a real brutal round, I'm you. I mean, I don't know what effect it may have had on him, but I think Mayweather, even though it was a major round that he could have given to Vargas, I would say that the momentum should have been better for Mayweather because I thought that he fought a much smarter strategy by letting Vargas extend himself and open up afterwards. But, you know, the round could have either way, but I think going down the stretch, I think that Vargas is going to tie, but who can tell? In round nine, they landed a combined 62 punches by CompuBox estimation, 60 of them power shots. I'd be surprised if you see another rally in the last three rounds by Vargas to match what he was able to do in round nine. And Mayweather back up and moving on his feet now as the 10th round progresses toward its midpoint. Which I think is smart because going down the stretch, footwork gives a body to fight if he's not that good with his feet once he's just tired. Well, Floyd certainly doesn't have to stand in the corner and trade shots with Gloria no, Marcus no. unless he wants to. No, he can box now. I think he's taking a lot of energy out of him. And I think his youth and speed will carry him down the stretch. He should finish up very strong now. training a young talent like Floyd Mayweather, how do you get him not to be knockout conscious? I mean, do you think this kid is perfectly satisfied to close to a 12-round victory here? I think he's going to be satisfied. I think he's settled in and realized that he's had a difficult fight. And for the, for the most part, he's going to be glad <laughs> to see the 12 round on the two. This is a much rougher fight than he ever expected. I think he should use his footwork for the last round or two because it's real difficult for a lot of fighters to twist and turn and pivot a lot when they're tired if they're not going to get to with their face. Floyd switches to a southpaw stance for the second time in the fight. Third time, he says. Thank you. <laughs> Floyd, thanks for the correction. <laughs> You guys should get my headset. You can do the take my blow as well. And while he's boxing. Hard right hand by Mayweather right down the pipe. Come on, come on. Come on. 
we got two rounds to go. That's all we got. You won the last two. Let's go for it. You got two rounds. A lot of punches. And you're going to be aggressive. He doesn't want to fight anymore. He's very tired. You got to use that rhythm and the pressure. Vargas still searching and finding Mayweather in that case. That left hand excited the crowd, and you heard Vargas's dad asking him for what might be impossible, which is big activity and mucho business in the last two rounds against Mayweather. Well, if both fighters listen to their fathers, we'll have a hell of a round. <laughs> That's right. Both fighters will say they want a big round. <laughs> but I'm, I'm very surprised at Vargas. He's impressed me with his stamina, and it seems like he's gotten to a groove right now where he hasn't changed. <laughs> See, one, two, where's the three, four? He doesn't want to stand in there for the three, four. Floyd Mayweather was a very fast time in the title, but not a really big puncher. I think fans want to see this kind of almost perfection from a fighter like Mayweather. You know, especially after the rounds they've had a couple of rounds back. <laughs> they want to go back to those days. But, you know, oftentimes when a guy starts boxing and another guy gets tired, he can catch him with a clean punch that he doesn't expect and can have more power and effect on that than when they're standing toe to toe. Because he's not expecting, his mind is so preoccupied at chasing him. So then he gets hit with a punch and he's not expecting it. But your point is well taken, Larry. Fans like blood and guts. They appreciate what Roy Jones does, but they're in love with Tommy Hearns. Well, it's not just blood and guts. It's, it's stand and deliver sometimes. It's show passion. It's to want to complete your work in there. Uh, whatever it turns out to be. Mayweather Jr. Misses with the left hook. It's always nice to see a young fighter try to finish combinations with the left hook. Mayweather using his feet now to be sure as we come to the closing seconds of the 11th round. The scattered occasional boot echoing through the arena here as some fans want to see more action like they saw in the 8th and 10th rounds. Definitely, I would like to see more action that way, but if I was far, maybe it's more than I would to keep fighting the way he's fighting. <laughs> It's the last and final round. It's the last round. You gotta gamble. You gotta go and throw punches. Last round, we told you. Let's get the mouthpiece in there. Let's go. We got one chance. There's no more secret. The fight is not that way. It's closed. Just a spectator, Diego Chico Corrales. Two developments uh, in the corner. One, Mayweather is shaking his right hand as though he may have heard it. And secondly, his father whispered something in his ear about what he wanted. And whatever their rift is outside the ring, Junior said, I'll try to do it for you, Dad. And I think that was beautiful. This fight may be the fight that can bring you two back together, believe it or not. Harold, how do you have it for 11? Who okay, Jim? I got a 10 for 1, 109, 99, Floyd Mayweather Jr. I agree with Larry on that ninth round. I thought that Floyd Mayweather deserved that because he hammered him out of ropes. But, you know, good ring generalship, good punching like that, good defense by Floyd. I mean, he's doing all the things that the judges really watch it. He should be winning this fight handily. Still throwing the right hand. 
Yes, he's throwing it, but not with a lot of power. Slapping it. Yes, yeah, he's throwing it. But I, I think he has one for him. But he's fighting a very smart fight, and I think this fight will make him go up and become a complete fighter, much more than those other fights he's right. had in first. Because he's been challenged for the first time, he's been hit, I think, and he's had to extend himself out his time. I don't think he's ever been in this state physically where he's been exhausted and still has had to continue to fight. And it's been 12 been, rounds with a real pro, a quality professional fighter who knows what he's doing in there and who understood a little of how to try to compensate for his physical disadvantages against Floyd. That's correct. Not having the speed to compensate, for, but he did other things. And I think as a result of this, Floyd has grown and possibly his relationship with his father may improve a lot after this fight because he's been a pretty rough fighter and his father's one of the things that he had to look to to help him get advice and to try to in this case survive. In 20 seconds or less because we're in the last minute of the fight when you see a fighter walk into your gym with his dad Emmanuel do you say to yourself that's good because he has the back of the support of a family member or that's bad because the dad is likely to be living through the son for vicarious In most cases the dad is living through the son. I have some exception cases I have one of my kids in Detroit killing my copy of law his dad is one of my biggest assets but in most of the cases the dad can use your father. 45 seconds to go. A decision rather than a knockout, very likely, as Floyd Mayweather comes down the stretch against Gregorio Vargas. A fight in which you might conceivably have scored every round for Mayweather, but nevertheless, a test of his overall professionalism and a chance to show off all of his varied skills against a guy who knows how to fight. Having said that, he doesn't look like any $12 million fighter to me. He and his supporters will dispute this. Joe Goosen seeming to ask his fighter, why did you fight the 12th round that way? I told you you needed a knockout to win. But thinking about a knockout against Floyd Mayweather Jr. and getting one are two entirely different things. And in what might be seen as evidence that Vargas is ready to retire from the ring, his handlers elect to carry him around after he has taken an obvious shellacking from Floyd Mayweather. Harold, how'd you score a 12 Which is almost perfect, but not quite. 119, 108, 11 rounds to one for Floyd Mayweather Jr. Uh, you gotta give him that extra point for round six for the knockdown. Boy, your Vargas definitely went round nine on my card. Uh, but you know, as I, I started to say before, uh, clean punching, effective aggressiveness, ring generalship, good defense. It was all Floyd Mayweather. He deserves to win this fight by a wide margin. And now let's go to ring announcer Michael Buffer with the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, here at the MGM Grand, we go to the Budweiser scorecards. John Keane and Daniel Vanderbilt scored the bout 119 to 108. Chuck Jampa scores at 118 to 109 for the winner and still the undefeated champion, Pretty Boy Floyd Mayweather. So Mayweather remains unbeaten, as did another 130-pound titleist earlier this evening, Diego Chico Corrales. Big smile on the face of Floyd Mayweather Sr., who has been through some rough times, having been dismissed, more or less, by his son as manager. Actually, Floyd Jr. said to us yesterday, get this straight, my dad was never really my manager. But most of the boxing world saw him that way. Nevertheless, business upheaval and change leads to no diminution of skills in the ring.
Anderson and Floyd Jr. cruises to a unanimous decision victory. Final punch stat numbers will show Floyd Jr.'s punching accuracy as he landed 42% of his overall punch output, throwing more than Vargas, landing more than Vargas, landing at a higher percentage rate, and by and large, landing the more effective blows throughout the fight. And Larry Merchant stands by with Floyd Mayweather Jr. in the ring. Merchant. All right, thank you, guys. Floyd, congratulations. More difficult fight than you anticipated. Uh, not at all. I knew Goya Vargas was a, a tough opponent, ex-champion. But first of all, I want to thank God for this victory. And um, thank Team Mayweather and thank Grant. Did you hurt your hand somewhere late in the fight? To be honest, I came to this fight with um, a messed up right hand. But I didn't want to have no excuse for uh, backing out because I'm a true champion and I come to fight. And I'm gonna, was it bothering stuff. you more in the late rounds than the early rounds? Because you started to shake it. Early rounds it really wasn't bothering me too much. But around the, the six rounds started hurt me, but I still was throwing it. So, you know, I wanted to go out there put on a good show and show how true champion fights. Ninth round, you stood and exchanged with Vargas a lot. Why? Did you want to take him out? Did you want to give the crowd a show? Give us your explanation. I wanted to show the you know, crowd that I can't fight in the inside a little bit. And um, yeah, working on defense. I need to go back home and work on some defense with my father. Talk over some things with him and um, get things ready for my next fight. Before the last round, your dad whispered something in your ear and you say, I'll do it. try it for you, Dad. What did he say? He said, um, give, me a, give me a strong 12 round if you can. And I said, Dad, let me try to give it all that I can. You know, I love you and uh, I know you're behind me 100%. All right, there's no secret that uh, you and your dad have had your differences outside of the ring. Did everything work inside of the ring and can... Can you work together inside of the ring and maybe repair things outside of the ring? Well, everything that happened on the outside of the ring was hearsay. I mean, I love my father more. I always love my father. And I always want my dad to be my trainer. I always want my dad to support me 100%, no matter what he says. I love my father. Give us your rating of this fight, Dad. I think it was a very, very good fight for, uh, you know, being laid out six months and, um, you know, and um, not really having the right spine that we really need, but I mean, I thought he put a tremendous job. I think he threw a lot of punches, and, and like you said, about the um, about his uh, defense, you know, he's been off a little bit, so, you know, he got to hit a little bit more than anticipated, but, you know, we don't go to the gym, we don't get it all together. It's no problem. Uh -huh. Is, is this where it's now the most fun for you, in the ring and in the gym, because that's where you are close? Well, this is my son, in regards to what I was said in the paper, uh, in the media, around the world. This is my son. I love it. My blood run through this man. And like I said, it's blood run through me. I mean, we may have different. Everybody will have different. That's life. Nobody is perfect. He's young. To me right now, he's young. Right now to me, he's making big mistakes. But, hey, we all make mistakes. I made them. He's going to make them. Sometimes we pay more than the other guy. So, you know, I just hope some kind of way, and I pray that, hey, that everything will work out for him. But this is my son. I love him. We're going to be together forever. Just one last thing. Did you watch Corrales, Corrales fight? Give us your thoughts about him and about meeting him in a big showdown fight perhaps later this year. I'm looking forward to fighting Diego Corrales in the future. You know, hopefully um, we, can, we can build that fight up and uh, me and him can fight and unify the titles. And uh, I'm looking forward to fighting the WBA Junior Lightweight Champion next. And after that, me and Corrales can fight to unify the titles. Thank you very much.